Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mixup Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. I've got this card to show you. It's been highly requested. It's something that I've had quite a few messages regarding. So I've had a look at it a few times, to be honest, and I've looked at the Karen Berniston tutorial. Hers was from four years ago, and I believe the first one. And also Sushri Patel, who's the very popular lady on YouTube as well. And they've both done it. So if you want centimeters, then look at the Sushri Patel one but I'm, I'm going to be working in inches today. But I've come up with a way of doing the centre pop-up piece where you don't have to do any cutting. Okay, so it's, it's a basic pop-up, but I think it works really well. So for anybody that's not familiar with this, this is an exploding pop-up card. So it's an envelope all in one. So as you can see, that's the front. Now I've used Velcro on this one. I'm going to use magnets on the next one. You just open it up and then when you open it, you have this. And it is such a wonderful design. It is really, really nice. It's all origami folding, so it's just amazing. Now, all of this here, on many of the other tutorials, this is, well, on the Karen Berniston one, hers is actually a die that cuts this for you. But on others that I've seen, this is all cut, and it's very similar to the kind of pop-up card that I'd done a couple of years ago where you have to do all this kind of cutting. But if you look in here, they're all separate pieces so it's just easy, you just stick them on top of each other and you're done. So it is, all of it is really, really simple to do. I've even simplified this folding here as well. So I'm hoping that many of you now are gonna find this, this version, again, like I said, very easy to do. So it all folds down into a six by five envelope. You can obviously write on this section here or if you want to, you know, come up with another way of having a pocket in there, you could have another envelope stuck down that they open and then pull out a little card. It does stand up as well. Once you've got it there, that you know, it does stay up. But you can also write on the back here. So this is all plain. Okay, so I'm going to crack straight on into the tutorial. And I've already done some elements of it. So that's one of the halves done. So I'm going to use magnets. These are the... Just check. Oh, they're so strong, they stick to everything. I'm trying to measure this for you. It is the half inch, it's just over that, but in millimeter, that is 15 mil. I think this is 16 actually. If I remember rightly, I'm sure they come up as 16 mil, but I will share them because the thing I love about these magnets, and these are what I use in mini albums, is they are so thin. Can you just see that? They are really, really thin, so they don't create any bulk, which I like. So I've got four of those, but you can use Velcro, okay? You don't need to, because I don't often use magnets, if ever, really, in card making, because I, you know my views on that. I just think it ends up going in the bin, and they're really good magnets. So, <laughs> But this one is quite special, and you do need a bit of strength to keep it in place. So I've used the 20 mil Velcro dots there on each end because I think it needs that. So for the actual envelope, the outer case, you want a piece that's 12 by six, okay? And along the 12 inch side, you want to score at five and then five and one eighths. And that's going to give you just this enough kind of room really to allow all that bulk from the concertina fold that goes inside. Then you want to score again at 10 and one eighth of an inch, 10 and a quarter, and 10 and three eighths of an inch. And again, that's going to give you this nice curved piece here to close and that's that small little one eighth of an inch piece there just yeah just doesn't stretch the card it just allows it to to move more freely so that's all you need to do with that piece there then for the actual side pop-up pieces you want two pieces that are six by ten okay and then for the actual pop-up piece in the middle you want one piece of ten by three and seven eighths and along the 10 inch side you just want to score it halfway so at five inches there okay then for that little kind of birthday cake pop up in the middle this one I'm going to do differently this one I'm going to have as like a planter so there's going to be lots of flowers coming out of it so I want to be able to kind of show you as well that you don't have to have it as a birthday cake so this piece here you want one that's three by three and along one of the three inch sides you want to score it a quarter of an inch of mine, so I'll go over mine again. So a quarter of an inch, one and a half inches, and two and three quarters. Okay. Then you want a piece that is two and a half by two and three quarters, and along the two and three quarter side, again, you want to score it. Then one and a quarter inches, and then two and a half inches. So what you will have here is two sides that are a quarter of an inch, but this piece on the left here will be smaller than this piece on the right, and that's correct, you want it to be like that. And I'll explain those in a bit more detail when we get to it. And then you want a piece that's two 
by two and a half and you want to score then again along the two and a half inch side you want to score a quarter of an inch one and a half and two and a quarter and again you'll see that you've got a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch and then you've got another smaller piece and a larger piece okay then to decorate you want two pieces that are five and three quarters by one and three eighths of an inch and then to decorate the very front you want a piece that's five and three quarters by four and three quarters this is going to run landscape so the longest side so the five and three quarter side you want whatever pattern you're going to have you will need it to face up right with that length okay because that is going to be for example this purple piece here so it's going to stick over like so okay so first of all if you just grab your case here and just score and just burnish those score lines so bearing in mind you've got quite a few that are very close together so you just want to carefully kind of lift it and like roll it just so they fall into place and then again you've got those three at the top and with these ones really it's just easier to just do it by hand just kind of squeezing each one just to create that kind of little curve really that little arch because that's what it will do. So you can see now you've got a really nice arch when you've gone over those three score lines and then you'll have that smaller section there at the bottom. So now when you put that together, it'll be slightly thicker at the top here, which is correct, because when that concertina all folds together, there's a lot of bulk at the top and then just a little bit there at the bottom, okay? Then we're on to the fun bit. Now this is just so easy to do. So you look at it and you think, wow, that's complicated, because I did as well, So, but it's not. So what you need is like I said, you've got two pieces that are the six by ten. Okay. Now you want a pattern really that is just not directional. It doesn't matter which way it goes. So I know this has kind of got these patterns going like that, but you can also have it this way. I just think it works a bit better that way because of the fold and the, you know just the way it's all going to look. So what you want to do first of all is just fold this in half. Okay. And you want to fold if you're using a single-sided paper make sure you, sh you fold pattern to pattern if you've got double-sided then that's fine also I would say you do want a paper the thinner the better actually because there's not going to be any tension on this there's not going to be anything well you could have stuff dangling off of it if you want to but it is purely a decorative piece but because there's a lot of folding going on with this you don't want anything too thick now I'm using the Secret Garden Dovecraft papers and these are 150 GSM and that's okay but it's still does create quite a lot of you know you've got to really work it so anything lower than that perfect but I wouldn't go any higher than 150 GSM okay so we're going to fold this one in half okay so we just folded it in half and you want it opening like this this bottom corner here and you've got the open side here you're going to bring this right down and fold it and you want to focus on that top corner making sure that you get that fold running you know right through the very end there so you get a nice kind of sharp point and again just burnish everything keeping it all nice and flat it's going to be your best friend if you haven't got anything like this you can also use a ruler that's completely fine okay now there's two ways to do it you can keep it folded like this and then we can start folding in but what most people seem to do is then unfold it like this and you want to then bring this piece in like so so now I've folded it inside itself okay so that's where we were to start with we just folded it like this open the whole thing out and bring this middle score line this five inch score line bring it down and let everything fall back into place again okay flip it over now I'm going to use my grid it's really easy if you've got a grid here and just line it up okay and I know that each of my squares are an inch so you want to come to this so this is this is six inches now from here to here so if you're working from here so you've got one inch two three four five six okay with the four inch one here which is two inches from this side you just want to fold it right across now it's just easy if you've got a line if you're just going to run your ruler along the bottom so that's fine if you just want to if you if you're got a centimetre mat or your mat just isn't something that you use for that you can lie a ruler down here and you'll see there that it's exactly six inches and then where it says four inches here you just want to fold and just keep it nice and straight okay 
Then you're going to fold back, so I'm going to bring it back into my grid, back by an inch. Okay, so now you're creating this one inch section. So you now have a one inch section here, and then this turns into a one inch section here. And again, just burnish it. And it doesn't matter if it's slightly off because that's the way it's going to naturally fold in. So you can see here, when I fold it all up, you see there's a little bit off the top there. Don't worry about that, it really doesn't matter because everything all kind of falls into place. And then you're going to come back again. You want to do an inch. I'm going to pull mine up a little bit there, like so. And then the last one you want to come back over again. And it will come just shy, but that's fine. Okay, and again, just go over that. So don't worry, you can see how mine looks. See, even there, it's just slightly off. Don't worry about any of that. Don't worry that that doesn't sit perfectly over the top. Then undo them and then fold them back the opposite way. Okay, you're just basically helping it um, not crack and just really kind of flow quite freely. Okay, then open the whole thing out again like this and then what you want to focus on so if I bring this one in here it doesn't matter which way that I've got both of mine this way because that one you'll just turn around that's why it's good to work with a pattern paper that is not directional okay so this middle school line this is still our five inch school line now if I fold it in half again you can see how everything looked you want that to be a mountain fold and you can see straight away everything wants to kind of come in again once you've got that mountain fold, everything either side then will be a valley. So this one here will come up, okay? And then the next one. So if you just work that so it creates a valley, keeping that middle one as a mountain, work these ones as a valley. Then the next one's down again, so it's a mountain. So that one there as a mountain. And as you bring it all in, it will naturally start to just fall into place. So you can see there's my original mountain then I've got valleys either side, then I've got mountains either side. So now just these two here need to become valleys. So you just pop them up. Again, pop that one up, like so. You do one side at a time if it's easier. Once you've got it in and burnished, you now that's all ready to go. It will just line up like that. And again, this one here, once again you push that down, you see there, it all just forms its own little kind of home. And then burnish all of that. I'm even sticking out a little bit there, so I could go back in and work that again, because if I look at that one there, see that's flush, so that's better. You want to be aiming there. I've gone out a little bit there, but it's still going to work. It's still going to close up. But now when I open that up, there is one of our sides. So one more time. When you've opened it up, that middle five inch score line needs to be a mountain. Every score line back will then be the mountain, the valley, mountain, valley, mountain. You should have your middle as a mountain and these very last ones should be mountain folds. Like I said, once it's now in its home, it will automatically go back into that position and just go and burnish everything. Okay, so then you will have one that you want the larger section here to be on that side and one on this side because that's what we're going to stick into our card. You can see there it gives us this great explosion. Okay, so that's those two pieces. We've got the case and then we've got this piece here. So this was our piece of three and seven eighths of an inch by ten. So we've scored at five, you just want to fold in half. Okay like so, and that is going to sit inside these two pieces, like this, okay? So you can see how it's all coming together. So that piece we're going to work on and stick later, now we're going to stick these two pieces down and also decorate. So I would say just decorate it now, it's a bit easier, in fact that's a little bit crooked, let's just come over with that score line there, there we go. So I'm going to stick this one down, but before you stick that down, if you're using magnets, then you want to you want to pop a couple of magnets underneath first. So I'm just going to grab two here. Okay, and then I've got some glue dots, so I'm just going to grab one there. And I just want to bring it over, and you can see where everything's going to kind of roughly sit. So I'm going to pop one about there, and one 
You want to get them as lined up as you can. I think one there. So you can see where I've stuck that, okay, on the outer side, because then when this comes down, that's going to be obviously there. So now I can stick that down over the top. I'm just going to run some tape over those and then I'm just going to cover this. Okay, so just carefully lay that down, making sure you've got a nice even border. It's all stuck on the magnets. And then with those two pieces here, one is going to go on the front like so. Okay, let's stick that one down. And then with this one here, what you want to do first of all is take your other two magnets and let them find their homes on those. And then again, I'm going to just stick a glue dot on each one. And then close down the lid, bearing in mind, obviously you want it to kind of have that gap. Okay, so when you bring it down, just make sure it lines up, but try and keep that open. I mean, you could wait now until we put the, the centre in if you want to put this last bit on because you've done the rest. But you, you see what I mean? You want that to be kind of open like that. So I'm just going to squeeze that down. And now it lifts off my magnets. They're a little bit crooked, but you're not going to see that. Again, I'm just going to run a strip over there. And on this one. So these are super strong magnets, so you can see it just snaps straight into place. Okay, but that's only if you've got magnets. If not, just use Velcro dots, it's fine. So that's that piece already. Next, we need to stick everything down inside. So you want one piece that's going to be, like I said, on this side. When you stick this in, it will, you want to stick it. Because, so you'll see here, we've got the two score lines. You want to stick this so it sits right in the middle of it. Okay, like so. So this outer edge will line up with the edge of your card and the bottom will stick. So it's good at this point to use a wet glue. I just found it worked just much easier and it just gives you that kind of time really to move stuff around until you're happy. So obviously you as well, you wanna make sure you're not sticking it that way. So you've got, you see, we've got this piece here that needs to be on the outer side. So just check when you come to open it, you wanna make sure that it opens up with this all in the, in the inside. So your pattern paper facing inwards, don't go and stick it the other way around. So I'm just going to, Stick some glue on one side first. So just again, you want to make sure that you don't come right out of the top. So you want to make sure that this top flat edge doesn't come over the edge of this. So I can show you with this one here. You can see it's right up to the line. See here? and it runs right in the middle of this one here. Don't worry if you have a little bit of this gathered section popping out because we've got this arched piece here. Can you see it just curves right over, allowing you to close it fine. So, okay, so that's why you don't need to be really, really precise with it all. Don't panic yourself if you're a little bit out because it will all just still work. So open it up and just make sure all that glue is spread out and everything sits nicely in place okay and then you want to do the same with this side so I'd work on both the same sides at the same time and then do these two top sides at the same time because you can close the whole thing together so again I'm just going to pop some of my glue on the back okay so again each time just close it all up and make sure you're happy you've got nothing overhanging these sides here and that all closes nicely with my magnets, okay? So next, I need to put glue now on both of these sides, and because I'm happy that everything's lined up, I can do the glue at the same time. Now just make sure that all sticks down, and then flip it over and open it up, and you can go in there with your finger and just make sure everything's, again, nice and secure. Okay, so now we have this awesome, it's so clever, absolutely love this. Just look how good that looks. So next we can add this piece in, but before we do that, you want to stick all of your little pop-up pieces and that will stick there and it should line up nicely with the very top. Okay, and again, perfectly with the bottom. So it can, you know, it hides these side pieces really, really nicely, I think. Okay, so now we've got all of these little pieces here. So I'm just going to fold and burnish all of them.
Okay, so I'll go through all the mats and layers for them. In fact, I'll write all the mats and layers down for them over on my blog, and um, so you can just go to them because some of you might want to do this version, and I'm not going to do them. I don't think anyway on all of them. Okay, so with the largest of these three pieces, so the smallest one is your top tier, middle one is your middle tier, this is your bottom tier. This piece here, what you want to do first of all, and I would say a double-sided tape is probably good for this just because you get that instant stick, but if you've got a quick dry and glue that will be fine. So you want to add double-sided tape to the backs of these little tabs here that you've got, the quarter inch tabs. And just cut onto a little wedge just on those tabs. It just again means you don't get anything kind of overhanging. This is what you should have. So this is our three by three piece, so just to tape on both. Now take the tape off of one and fold both of them inside. The middle score line, okay, mine are the same, yeah, the middle score line, you want that to line up with the middle score line here, but you want to make sure that you've got an equal overhang. So if you just stick the top one down first, because that's sliding around so we haven't taken the backing off, it will allow you to move it into place until you're happy that you've got an equal kind of piece hanging over there so it's nice and centered and this score line is running with that one okay once you're happy really hold it down and just fold that tab under and stick it down and then you can just come back and take off this one here and again keep it folded under bring that one down first and then everything else will just line up and then you can just come in with your bone folder and really work the score lines and the tape but now you'll see you get that first pop-up piece and it should form a perfect square when you bring it up to a right angle. Then with the next one, again, you want to pop tape onto both of the tabs. Now with this one, you've got your two tabs that are the same, but then you've got one section that will be smaller than the other. So there's my larger one. This is the smaller one. If I go that way, you can see this one's smaller, this one's larger. The smaller one, you want to face the top. Okay, this time you want to take the tape off of the top one, so the one that's above the smallest section. With the larger section, fold it under, and this time you want to move it around on the top half of this piece. So we've got our middle score line, we're working within that top area. You want to bring it down so it's just a quarter of an inch above that score line. Okay, so if you bring in your ruler there and just lie it down, you want it to be a quarter of an inch and then make sure that you've got a quarter of an inch overhanging from each side. Okay, once again you're happy, just fold the top one down and let it fall into place, like so. Then bring this one, take the backing off and you can just fold that one down, like so. And again, go in and really make sure all your score lines. Now when you bring it up again, You'll see, and each time you want to make sure that this is completely all straight. Okay, so now we've got our two tiers. So now we just need to finish the last one. So again, add your tape to your tabs. Okay, so again, take the tape off of the top smaller sections. The smaller one needs to face the top. Bring this one down. And again, now you're working within the top section of the second tier. So that smaller section of that middle tier. And again, you want to come up a quarter of an inch. Come up a quarter of an inch and make sure you've got that quarter of an inch either side. So on all three sides it should be a quarter of an inch. Hold it in place and stick it down. Again, just take away the bottom and it should just all fold down. Like so. And now when you bring everything up, Look how neat it is on the side, and that's what you want to work towards. Now fold the whole thing in half, and it should all fold flat. If it's a little bit, you know, it needs a little bit of force, just push it a bit. It's only going to just kind of kind of stretch the score line, but it shouldn't cause any damage to it. So now you can see it opens up like so. And that is your cake tier. That's the easiest way to do it. Now I'm going to be using this as a planter, so I'm actually going to do... The idea I've got is to have plants kind of cascading down from it. But now we can stick that inside here. Oh, wrong way, that way, like so. And everything will fall in perfectly, okay? So now I'm going to stick all of this down. So I'm just gonna add again, I'm kind of liking using the wet glue with this project just because it does give you that time to move everything around. So I'm gonna add, again, do it one side at a time. So I'm just gonna stick it on this piece first and then 
bring it in and make sure that you've got it with an equal border and just lie it down. It should come up perfectly in line with that one there. So I'm just going to fold that in half for a minute just so I can really push down to make sure it's all stuck. Okay, and then again I'm just going to come in now and put some more glue on this top piece. And then I can just bring that one down and fold the whole thing down as well. Just again, it's always just making sure everything all lines up. Once you're happy you can open it again and just stick it all down. Okay, so now you have your card all ready for you to decorate. So I am going to be using all the matching accessories for this collection. So I've got the Secret Garden bunting, I've got the paper blossoms there. The, these are kind of like, this was part of the wooden shapes because I've got them in another packet. But this is all the little cutouts from one of the papers. So I think I'm going to kind of do something with those. I've got the ribbons, I've got these little toppers here which say happy birthday all with love, the washi and then also the stickers. So whatever I decide to put here I'll tell you all the measurements in a bit and I might actually have something here like a sentiment or something stamped. So again you'll see all that but I'm going to put this on high speed now so you can watch what I do. Okay so after that I realised I didn't hit record and I'd done all the decoration but it's fine I can talk you through it. So when you open it up I have these lovely paper flowers which I've decorated on each of the tiers and I've also stuck one on the back. Stuck the bunting just like I did on the other one. That's a little fussy cut bird. These are some of the stickers. Fussy cut the little Wellington boot there. And then here I've got a piece of three by three with a piece of white two and three quarter by two and three quarter. But you may want to do three and a quarter squared which is the silver on this one and then three by three with the white. So that's a little bit bigger. So it depends how much you've got to kind of write on it. otherwise like I said you can do it on the back there. I didn't end up doing anything on these, well this one here because you've got the, the velcro but on this one because you've got the magnet if I add too much onto there it may weaken the actual closure because there's going to be more paper in between the magnets so I've left that blank. I've left the front blank as well because I still don't know this could work as maybe like a get well card or something so you can see what I did there I just done the flower kind of matching the collection. Okay, so, but for the mats and layers for the birthday cake, I will share on my blog, as I said, because I didn't end up doing them at all on this one. But I'd just like to give you two, you know, alternatives, really. You don't have to have it as a birthday cake, and that looks really fun. You see it on the side, and it is just, yeah, an explosion of loveliness, or the ultimate pop-up card. I just think it looks really, really cool. So, as always, I will share all of the links over on my blog and I will share all the product that was used, all the measurements, like I said, those mats and layers. And yeah, until next time, I hope you've enjoyed the tutorial today. Please give me a thumbs up if you have and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.